as we come together for this great feast day and this last day of the novena, we offer first the prayer to St. Jude. St. Jude, glorious apostle, faithful servant, and friend of Jesus, the name of the traitor has caused you to be forgotten by many. But the church honors and invokes you universally as the patron of difficult and desperate cases. Pray for me, who am in need of God's mercy. Make use, I implore you, of that particular privilege accorded to you to bring visible and speedy help where help was almost despaired of. Come to my assistance in this great need that I may receive the consolation and help of heaven in all my necessities, tribulations, and sufferings, particularly. And that I may praise God with you and all the elect throughout all eternity. I promise you, O blessed Jude, to be ever mindful of this great favor. I will honor you as my special and powerful patron and encourage devotion to you. St. Jude, pray for us and for all who honor and invoke thy aid. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. We have spent this novena reflecting on the ten principal virtues of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Ten perfections of human nature. Ten authentic areas of habitual maturity that she models for every Christian adult. Her profound humility, the foundation of all the virtues by which we stand in the reality of what we are before God, having received everything from Him. Her lively faith, not marred in any way by sin, and alive in good works. A faith that completely trusted the Lord. Her blind obedience Not seeing the fullness of what the Lord was doing, but offering her perfect yes from that lively faith that knew his power and his love. Her continual prayer, always uniting her heart and mind to God, maintaining that humility and strengthening all the other virtues in him. Her universal mortification always setting aside her will for the Lord's in all things. Her divine purity in her life without sin as the immaculate conception and the singleness of heart with which she loved. Her ardent charity, that perfect friendship with God by which She shows us how to love God and love our neighbor, which forms and shapes all of the virtues. That we might be ordered not just to this world, but to the eternal life to come. Her heroic patience, as she suffered well on earth and continues to suffer alongside of us, Today, we speak of her divine wisdom. But first, what do we mean by wisdom? We speak of the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Three of those are wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And I don't know about you, but those all kind of always sounded the same to me. And at some level, we use those words interchangeably. 
but the tradition has a way of speaking about them as three distinct things. Knowledge in this narrow sense has to do with knowing things, especially to their externals, and having proper judgments about them. Let's say you want to cook something. You need to know some recipes, how to measure things, all the different words and methods involved. Are you mixing or folding or blending? How the oven and the stove work, etc., etc. Understanding is about seeing into things and grasping principles. Getting at those foundations that lie hidden or under the things. Not just following the recipes, but having the principles to manipulate those recipes or to just make your own. As well as the art of being able to fix the dish when it's just missing that something. Wisdom, however is knowing the highest cause. Wisdom is knowing the ultimate source and the purpose of things that allows us to direct all things properly. Wisdom in cooking is going to be that beautiful meal, that wonderful dining experience. All the knowledge and understanding of cooking being drawn together to their proper end. We can look at knowledge, understanding, and wisdom in other ways. In the moral life, there is knowledge of knowing what is right and what is wrong. There is understanding in really grasping why things are right and wrong resulting in an ability to encounter new and surprising situations and yet still being able to act on the right principles. And there is wisdom in being able to guide all of our decisions into a life well lived. A life of virtue in the perfection of the human person and ultimately a life ordered to an eternal life with God. In matters of faith, there is knowledge in knowing your catechism, what is and what is not, the faith. Understanding is grasping why these things are important and the theology that underlies them. Wisdom is in making right judgments about the faith through truly knowing God and through the union of love with Him that is charity. We have a huge problem in our society in that we have far more knowledge about things than we have ever had. Knowledge on a scale that dwarfs all preceding times as if they knew nothing. Knowledge so great it has become impossible to collect and compare and order it. But for all our knowledge, we spend very little time seeking to understand what it is we think we know. And abandoning real philosophy and theology, we've generally traded authentic wisdom for mere ideology. And it leads to ridiculous polarizations that we see in the world around us and even in our church. It leads to the inability to engage in rational dialogue and to a relativism that results in the greatest absurdities. But 
But there is a knowledge, an understanding, a wisdom that is the kingdom of heaven. There is a union with the Word of God, the very wisdom of God Himself, that leads to all truth. And yet, we still do so much better with the wisdom of this world than with that of the world to come. We can take on ridiculous diets, but we have to go easy on the fasting. We can give tremendous gifts to win favor, but we can only give so much to those in need. We can spend hours on a phone or getting coffee with somebody or drinks, but we struggle to find time to pray. We are easily caught up in our own little kingdoms, working so hard and so prudently for my own good and fail to respond to the wisdom offered us in that kingdom, which is so much greater than me and yet in which we have truly been made heirs and co-heirs with Christ to the source of goodness himself. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. How better could we summarize divine wisdom? This is why we go to Mary. Because she always leads us to Christ. She knows the highest cause, the ultimate source, and the purpose of all things in her Son, our Lord and our God. She has always, in divine wisdom, ordered her life to Him. And she never fails to lead us to Him. To order us to Him as well. She is the Immaculate Conception but she is also simply a human being like us and therefore can show us the most perfect imitation of Jesus that our limited nature allows. She is the queen of heaven and earth, but she is also our mother in tenderness and love. Penance, 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 she cried at Lord's, longing for the salvation of all sinners and begging us to participate in that work. That the grace and love of God might multiply as it is shared among us. And that her children might be drawn more tightly together in the body of Christ. Here before the body and blood of our Lord in this most blessed sacrament, in the very body and blood he received from his mother and our mother, Mary. May we come to know more of the mother he has given to us all, becoming better imitators of her virtues, seeking what she sought, practicing what she exemplified, and in coming to know and imitate Our Lady of Lourdes, may we come all the more to know, love, and imitate her Son, Jesus Christ, the source of all wisdom and virtue, our Savior and our God. Let us then conclude with our novena prayer to Our Lady. O Immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of Mercy, you are the refuge of sinners, the health of the sick, and the comfort of the afflicted. You know my wants, my troubles, and my sufferings. 
By your appearance at the Grotto of Lords, you made it a privileged sanctuary where your favors are given to people streaming to it from the whole world. Over the years, countless sufferers have obtained the cure for their infirmities, whether of soul, mind, or body. Therefore, I come to you with St. Jude as my patron to implore your motherly intercession. Obtain, O loving mother, the grant of my requests. Through gratitude for your favors, I will endeavor to imitate your virtues that I may one day share in your glory. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.